So for this next presenter, again, Unstoppable Youth Ministries, we provide emergency services, public education and training, and supportive resources around the country, but especially to those who are affected by human trafficking, domestic violence, and homelessness. Many people have no idea that human trafficking has happened right in their area. And I'm honored to bring this next presenter here to help you know the signs and know your own resources. So that way, if you see it, if you, God forbid, experience it with a loved one, you know what to do, you know where to go. I want you to be unstoppable all the way around. Not just in one area, but all the way around. So her name is Sylvia Alman. And for almost 27 years, she's been traveling as a missionary and has moved to five different states because of her ministry. Now, Sylvia, she didn't understand when I said, send me your abbreviated bio. Sylvia sent me a book, and it's tough to highlight. I'm trying to pick out the amazing pieces. Um, she moved into Jacksonville, Florida in 2006, and she immediately wanted to make phone calls to find out if there's anything done about human trafficking, but she didn't find out. She didn't find what she was looking for. And at that time, she um, was with a group at the beach from a church called Woman Alive. Um, was a very small pray, prayer and worship group. Um, these women were for something else to serve and then to be a part of the community. See, I love the fact that Sylvia is trying to be a part of the solution. So many times we recognize a problem, but we ignore it, knowing that we ourselves can be the solution. So she is a part of uh, SOAP, which is Save Our Adolescents from Prostitution. She is also a part of the Northeast Florida Human Trafficking Coalition. And I can go on and on, but I want this to be Sylvia's time. So Sylvia, without further ado, please come to the stage. Please give her a warm welcome. Well, thank you so much, Jennifer. Thank you for what I actually ministry we have it and so it resonates so much in my soul for everything because we are the stop over. Like you said, we are we want to be the answer to it, the solution to it. So we can be we can let people start us. We have to be the stop over. So what I do in the community, what I do here in the city of Jacksonville and our uh, seven districts around here is being bringing awareness about human trafficking, what is going on in our community, what is happening. And as you all know, I mean, human trafficking is very big. It's very big. Um, it is one of the biggest crimes around the world. I'm going to go through slides, but I'm not going to go completely go through it, read it, and everything. So I'm going to give a brief thing. That's the time also, too. But this is the largest crime in the world that affected our city, our community, our families, everywhere, whatever we. And it's a message that is still there yet. People don't know what is going on in our community and our own backyard. This crime is worldwide. It's worldwide and it's affected a lot of ways. Uh, it's affected the whole country. Our 50 states is affected by this crime. So it's, it's amazing what um, so many girls, so many women, so many um, adolescents, uh, even men, is going through this crime. So we want to. Uh, learn about this time. It's over 30,000 women and men and children travel in this world. You know, they come in and out of our uh, own backyard, cities, city limits, countries, all over the world. So we wanted um, the places that we continue need to be identified in the past. Everybody was used to go to work, prostitutes, the streets. But I was scoring girls, but now more and more the girls are being put in many and many places that you don't even think about it. What we do are nails. You know, it's not just the strip clubs, it's not just the clubs, it's not just the places, but it's in places that are under kind of thing 
but it's the two of us, so we should go and see it. We just go and see it for what it is, why it's there. We go to our nails, we go to our massage, you know, we go to the doctor, we go to the hospital, we're in the mall, we're in the park, we're in the school with our children. So those are the other benefits, and not the famous celebrity, but it's right there in the same places that we all live. Our friends, our friends, our families, and everything. So it happens anywhere. All of the, a lot of the statistics, if you always check on it with the virus project, we work together with law enforcement, we work together with ICE, Homeland Security, and we cross borders to be able to get all these numbers, all these statistics, all these updates to bring it to you. It's one time that actually we also cross borders for us to be able to work together to be able to give the opportunity to rescue girls, to, to restore their lives, and to see them also to go to meet more life opportunity. You want to talk about that this is the biggest business in the world, and it's based on money. How much a girl can be sold? How much a girl costs for uh, performing sex? How much would a man is willing to pay for a girl choose to have hiding in the community to have sex. It's something that is not completely uh, open when they're soliciting a girl, when they're soliciting a woman, when they're soliciting a man. It's hiding also to have men, and because of the demand, also to have big in it. It's so big. A lot of the women, they don't even know they're going to become a victim. 99% of the women, they don't know you're going to become a victim. You don't know that this is going to happen to you. You may call, as we call to the pins, you know, this is the wrong mail. You may fall in love with me, you know, and eventually you will be adding, uh, adding things to it, to the love. The love that was asking something for that kind of love to be able to do. What is the basis of human trafficking? Face trafficking is not just sex trafficking. We have different sections of human trafficking, which is sex trafficking. Labor trafficking is a forced labor. There's also a bribe. Bribe, a bribe is also to one of the biggest that is going, especially here in our city of Jacksonville, in the schools. Um, we have already so many cases that older men who would like to marry the girls, and they will be paid on it, and the girls will be coming out of schools, and our local schools right here in Jacksonville, Bay County. Uh, different areas that uh, up, up to Daytona, we have many cases of it in the school with what is going on. And because we know that girl maybe have a couple of issues, we know, oh, maybe she's a run away, we don't miss her in school. But you don't, you don't know what really is going on with it. So that's a tough part of it. Labor trafficking is that you really solicited to work, and maybe in a house, but you will not be paid. And you will never have a day off and things like that. We also have the forced labor, child. Labor. You would think that it's only on another country, but it's right here. A lot of the kids that they've been selling door to door, the magazines, or all the products on it, and they will be asking, Where's the girls when you are with it? What are you doing in here? They said, Oh, just come there, oh boy, yeah, the thing can be up right here in the corner. That's labor trafficking for a child. That's, that is child trafficking. Because they are not being paid by selling or by gold magazines, or by gold cookies, or by gold cookies. We have an encounter all the time. I work out there on 50s, so and there's a couple hotels out there. All the time we see children come to our store and say, Hey, can you buy us cookies? Can you buy me? We ask, Where's the car? Oh, yeah, I'll sell it. Come on, take it up. So we know already we can record it, we can do something, we can, we know the questions to be asked of the children. So it's fun every day. The bride, as I said, bride force, we used to be just in our other countries, but it's growing here in our own country. Please pay attention to what is happening. Kids disappearing in the schools, and we just miss them. We don't, we just think there's nothing wrong for a child to come back to school. Even uh, sometimes teachers, you know, they already order the children, and they don't. Uh, there's not too many follow up with children when they come back to school. So we're missing a lot of children. We miss a lot of children in our community. I'm local recruitment. That used to be all the time just for the global countries, and they would be soliciting children soldiers, but not not happening right here that they solicited to be part of the gang members, solicited to be part of certain groups in the schools. You know, that we all had to fit in, in the box. We all had to we all had to be part of something. 
We don't want any, somebody to love us. We don't want somebody to be my friend. So we were still listening to the library, you know, and like I said, the seven minutes was, was happening and one day we were walk again and again and we said, we did that with that way. Because we're still listening to the words, we're still listening to the things that you wanted, things that you like it, and where I live in the world, it's easy to get to the world that they want. So we're still listening. And we have a lot of young comments in our city, in our schools, there are different colors, different brands, different things of gangs. And it gets solicited in the schools specifically for the children. So we have to watch that out the too. And then we have the domestic service, people who work in homes, people who work, um, you know, doing a cleaning. Or the majority of these elements have to a lot of people with money, people who work internationally come by here to be in a bay or things like that, but they have a mates. They have in a lot of it in the military. They have in a lot of it at one level. We have, have cases that cross over countries to go and pick it up for those to go and because they also be taken wherever they go. Sometimes uh, in the with the diplomats, because of the government, we have a lot of heads in the government and they travel, they go to the country, they come back to the banks, and there's a big problem that we have. Those girls or those men, they are traveling. They're not being paid. Sometimes the, the men of the house will also break them, abuse them, and other stuff. So we have to put attention on that. We have to ask questions, say, who to go? If you can't go out or if you go out, they always close the key. They're always scared. They don't talk to people. They don't make that comfort. What is happening in the traffic in Jackson, Florida? Florida, we are the third large state in the whole state of Florida. And we hope on Unfortunately, I've been doing it just for 50 years, and we have not changed the stat by suddenly these statistics. But what we have changed and what we have accomplished is that we are able to bring more awareness, we are able to bring more uh, educational, we are able to have more houses, more providers, more awareness of law enforcement, we are able to put borders on it as we rescue and work in, uh, with different cases. Uh, because of the area of Florida, how it is located in our country, everything is by water. Everything is along I-95, I-75, I-10. So the main roads are the big carriers of the world. And they have to move around it. So we are the third, I think Jackson, but we are the third large city on it. This is how it's our country. This is how our country looks like at my different time. This is how our city looks like here. Okay. We can't even find Jackson in the city. So that is what happens. This is how it completely, the red circle that you see it and the little red box is how it happened in our city in Jacksonville. But it's not this one in what area of the city you are. Actually, there's, if you see more, this is a beach area, and over there you see a lot of it. This is worldwide. Because of the demand, this is how the borders cross. This is how you see, can you find the United States there? United States is the demand come from it, and also is a producer. The ones who sell and buy of the girls. It's everything how it is worldwide. So it's a worldwide crime. So we don't even see that country because this is the hub. This country is the hub for human trafficking. When it comes to the cost, because the United States, the American, is the number one provider, the number one who has the demand for it, what the girls want it for, how they want it, in what country. Or even what city, what state? I have girls from Pennsylvania, I have girls from Texas, and I have girls from different states on the demand. Because of the media, also, too. We have a big problem with the media. When I remember five years ago, we only had five apps that we used to be concerned about that all my pension part of them. And we got a lot of cases like that. We didn't have many apps that we had, and we continually to have more than as crazy for that to be able to attend. The media, the social media. How we are now based on everything for us right now. Because of age, because of looking for jobs, because of looking for friends, you know, the online gaming, especially, is the big one. Because everybody, we play in our, we play in our homes. And then sometimes people just jump in it and say, hey, I want to play with you. And then they start like, well, why are you doing that? What are you playing with? Like We're okay. Everybody's well okay. Everybody's moving like before. This is also one of the statistics in Florida. So you can see the numbers, how it changed, how it is. And, uh, and for the last 
sitting here finally we are able to start to leverage the event for community now we were unable to do that because we didn't have a hotline we don't have too much going on i mean i like it going on but we don't have a hot we need to wait and start you know make people go about it and get it so this is the uh some of the quick facts where they are what is going on you know there are how many of the numbers the numbers continue to grow the numbers continue to that's not going down. That's not going down because of the economic plan. You know, how do we look for it? The girls are being trained. The girls, the girls, the guys, the guys in the different places, they couldn't even really know what they, they couldn't I mean, Everybody has the guy's name, the guy has the girl's name, they have the name of the maybe the gang name or things like that. And places that you can unimagine or can think about it going to find it. And that's what we know also to according to how many tattoos they have it. That way we know how many friends are total of the soul. Or by the time we reach the women, maybe she was to say of the age 13 to the age 27, 30, we basically lie. And they will show us all the tattoos and everything that they're supposed to see that was supposed to be able to see. So we have to after they allow us and they trust us, they will start showing us, they will start telling us, they will they will talk to us. In our locker rooms, we be looking for girls in locker rooms, what they have inside and what they put in the future. It's a lot of things that our little girls don't have. She don't have it. You know, so that's the other thing we have to pay attention. A lot of girls kept bringing into the house and the bags and the backpack. Okay. Where the traffickers are, everywhere. In schools, in the park, in the mall, in the bus, bus stations, the trucks, the stops, rest areas, the church, everywhere, everywhere. People that you may know that's going on with their lives, that's going on with them, you know, they're not talking to you, they're afraid, they're scared, they're, they're, you know, they're fearful, somebody doesn't know the name of them. They don't have money, their identity has been taken away, they're scared, they're crying, they never make that contact, you know, they're, they're afraid. Most of them always will be they walking with some, some stranger. You will see a man walking with two, three girls that they don't even look, they don't even match them. I do ask, oh, what a nice you walking with your grandparents, you know, your grandchildren. It's like, hmm, they look at themselves. You know, they know what it's about. So there's the signs that, kind of a few of the signs that you can look at. You know, they all, they will not talk to you. Then we put them on the side and say, you stay here, I talk, because they may be sharing. The girls have a lot of, a lot of the time, they have two phones. They have two phones. One is the mom or the mom and daddy have given to them, and another one that nobody knows. And that's the one that you will be careful because that's the one that is common work when they need to leave the house. We have a lot of runaways. Runaways in the old days used to be the runaways of the system. Believe it or not, now it's runaways any type of girl, any type of boy that needs to have a normal house. We have a case just recently. This girl has everything, but she wants an iPhone. Why does she not afford it? She left in the middle of the night with two kids from China. Why did you guys do that? And it's not true. Why can't this is in many cases that we have even tried to do that? Because of the media, because of what we want to have what we, we can have. We want to have what my friend has, we want to have what the other one everybody else has. You know, and we are going to help our children to understand that we, we we we're there. Give us time. Our kids can now partition. You know, that we are in a society that we want now. Now. And if you don't have it, the easy way is to go out and there is a guy ready to take that way. So they already have met somebody in the school. They already have met an adult. They already have a friend who is taking care of them. And then we tell them, we tell them, no, I have good friends. They take care of me. Don't worry about it. So that's what we actually have to work out with all of that. And I tell them, what about my mom? Don't take care of me. That word, they take good care of me. It's a key for you to think about it. Because this guy or this girl or this other was taking my baby, so the friends can make sure they have because they're taking care of them on the things that white people do. You know, so they can take care of them. So that's a key word they have to do. They can listen to each other. They can do it. You know, this guy, they can take me to places where I never could have been. I love it. Pay attention. You know, that's little by little. You know, you don't know anything. They don't want to do it. But they're taking you where you want to go. You know, we always find ourselves that most people tell us a lot of them are so. That's what we aim is to educate the, the hotels, our local houses, everything like that, the streets, so that when the girls could be identified, because then we're going to usually be coming in at one night, two nights or so, because by that time they get to any motel, hotel, 
Sylvia, please give her another round of applause. This is very important. Every 
conference, we try to have an advocate, someone who's in the trenches, speaking at an unstoppable you conference. I can't tell you of how many friends, people I know, where they find out that their loved one is being trafficked. These are people I know. And so when you go to Walmart or the post office, if you see these pictures, what makes it harder for the law enforcement is that the traffickers exploit the mass mandates. So you see the full face at Walmart or what Sylvia showed. But can you imagine when your face is covered, they can't whisper, I need help. That nonverbal communication, facial expression is taken away. So, yeah, traffickers are very cunning and they exploit the very things that are put in place to try to keep people safe. Human trafficking intersects with the pornography industry because many times those individuals, people are thinking, well, I'm not hurting anybody, I'm just behind the screen and I'm watching this pornography. But little do they know. Many times that victim, that's her first introduction. So that demand for pornography is, is fostering the demand and supply for, for, not, for pornography and that human trafficking victim. Um, human trafficking intersects the abortion industry because that's a permanent way to get in, um, rid of the evidence. And then when we talk about substance abuse, many times the traffickers are using opiates or substances to keep control of that victim. So again, we need to be aware, educate ourselves, spread this information, regardless if somebody you know should have been here or whatever, you now have the information. Knowledge is power. God says my people perish for a lack of knowledge. Don't let this be an opportunity where you just let it slip on by. Um, Unstoppable Youth Ministries, we actually helped a, a, a victim. She was trafficked by her boyfriend. And because resources in Southern Maryland are very low, I had to get her to a domestic violence shelter. Well, guess what? She suffers from epilepsy and she's bipolar. The domestic violence shelters were not equipped medically to deal with her. So after a few days, they told her she had to go elsewhere. And in Maryland, the counties, they're so territorial. In Prince George's, they want to take care of their people. So I can't cross. So what do you do if there's no shelter, there's no opportunity for safety in that area? So, Unstoppable Ministries, we are in the trenches. We are actually helping the victims.